complete upon the land. They wish to come forward and tell us all about their beauty and their holiness. And so one of their prophets and evangelists happens to be a savant for uh, none other than Joe Biden. Is that what they call him? A savant? What, what, are, you, what are you with Joe Biden? We're called surrogates. Surrogates. Okay, surrogates. There you go. <laughs> none other than my very good friend, Michael Brown. You can find him on the Michael Brown Show at M.A. Brown, D.C. Michael, it is a tremendous honor and pleasure to have you back on the air with us, sir. Well, I hope you had a good uh, time off, a good vacation. Great vacation, great time off. I uh, mm -hmm. gave you all an opportunity to go back and into time and history and describe for the American people everything that, uh, forgive me, that Donald Trump actually said about the coronavirus, and you're replaying it over again. So I, I, I think I think you all have a little bit too much time on your hands for this vacation. Uh, I want to first ask you, sir, how does it feel knowing that the President of the United States has just received his nomination for mm, the Nobel Peace Prize? Yeah, I, I heard about that, and it's a little, I'm, I'm sure it's from some wacko foreign <laughs> leader um, that for some reason wanted to get his name in the newspaper, it worked. Uh, but we know that, um, you know, this guy will never, 45 will never be selected for a Nobel Peace Prize. He's never really done anything to earn anything, really. Well, I, uh, so I don't think, I don't even know why we're wasting time on it. Well, I'm glad you asked about that. I'm quite certain that that was the introduction for me to go down the entire list of all his foreign policy accomplishments, which were more than actually a winner of the Nobel Prize received. Uh, I believe his name was Barack Hussein Obama, and he received it because he was black. Uh, apparently, you're upset with the fact that Donald Trump was able to work out a treaty uh, and trade deal with China, that he was able to work out an agreement between Ira Israel and United Arab Emirates, which is lauded not only, uh, but thank you, thank you, not, not lauded not only by the Saudi Arabians, but also lauded by, get this, the Palestinians. They like that deal. Apparently, they're sharing security with one another in order to bring down not only the Taliban, but also ISIS. The reason I'm getting, the only reason I'm a slight golf clap was because I don't know if everyone's happy about it. I think it's, it's certainly a step forward, and certainly I don't think uh, most people will complain, but I don't know if all Palestinians are for this particular deal. They were not consulted, as usual. Uh, the United States forgot all about, about, well, at least this administration forgot all about the Palestinians when they were doing the negotiating. Good for the UAE, good mm -hmm. for Israel, and we'll see what comes of it. But, I mean, this president now isn't doing much governing. All he's worrying about is re-election now. Oh, well, wait a minute. There, next week, representatives from Israel and from the UAE will be sitting down at the White House to sign the agreement. Isn't that... I mean, that hasn't been done since 1979. Menachem Begin and uh, Jimmy Carter. Carter. That's, absolutely. That's right. This is a monumental achievement. Which, I wouldn't quite call it monumental, but uh, uh, it's a good step forward. How is it not monumental when this is the first time it's I'm been done? put the actual Palestinian state at the table for a real signing. Then you have something to brag about. But with UAE, which is usually kind of Remember, UAE is like Switzerland. They're, they're usually not in the fray. So for them to do something with Israel is great. Again, step forward, but nothing like until you have really the real Palestinian state representatives at the table. Uh, well, why would you want them at the table if they don't want to be there at the table? Why would you want well, them? Well, but, that but that's real peace. No, real it's not. Leadership, real leadership and real peace is bringing folks together that don't want to come together. No, nope. what Jimmy Carter did. Well, what, uh, that's what Bill Clinton did. I that's don't. What Barack Obama did. Wait a minute. That's what, leadership. Well, aren't the UAE uh, a Muslim organization? Well, a Muslim nation that had great antithesis <clears throat> towards Israel. I, isn't that true? 
them for thousands of years. Well, yes. Just like, just like the Israelis do towards them. Exactly. This is amazing to me how the left seems to always downplay significant achievements done by this particular president. Because your call is not significant. It's a good step forward. And I think it's great. I gave you a golf clap. Oh, a golf clap. Oh, my God. So, so not only has he worked out a deal which is being... Uh, not only is uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, but other nations are following in line and saying, you know, we want to get a part of that particular peace deal. We want to do that. But you also have this arrangement between Japan and South Korea, the first time in over four decades that they have an arrangement that they're going to work together along with the U.S. to patrol the uh, South Asian seas uh, and, and hold back China. Uh, you, you have not only agreements from day one working with uh, Vladimir Putin in Syria, but you also have agreements with China in terms of pulling back from India. I mean, he's done a significant job on foreign policy. Vladimir Putin, you brought him up? Yes. He one that put bounties on U.S. soldiers' heads. Is that a... did nothing about it. You mean that Putin? Okay, wait a minute. Now... Is it true that we pulled our forces out of that particular region? Is that true? But that's what that's what Putin wants. Well, of course he wants that, and it's fine with us because I mean, what Putin wants him to do. That's what, that's, that's but, why he got impeached. But can you explain to everyone why that's necessary? He got impeached for dealing with Russia. Uh, no, no, he got impeached because Nancy Pelosi didn't find her way out of a salon in time. Uh, <laughs> that's the reason he got impeached. Uh, but we pulled our troops out from between was, Turkey was, and that was, that was unfortunate, unfortunate set of circumstances. Uh, and the speaker got set up. Ah, uh, oh, yeah, set up like Mary and Barry. I know. I see how that works. <laughs> you can only get set up if you do it. Uh, but we pulled our troops out because we were caught in between Turkey and Syria. And we were not going to allow our servicemen and women to die uh, at the hands of a setup between those two, two nations. So or, I, I think or, it was an excellent or deal. Putin's, or Putin's spies, allies, and agents convinced 45 to move soldiers out of that region. Well, speaking of spies, I, I want to give you an opportunity to listen to one. Uh, you may have known him from Watergate. Uh, he's written many, many uh, salacious books about Republicans. Uh, this time he's writing about Donald Trump. And, and this might be the season for salacious books about Donald Trump. If you can't beat him uh, with actions, then you got to try to beat him with words, just words, speeches. Uh, I want to play for you uh, Jack, Jake Tapper in his interview with Biden. And I want you to tell me right now, well, when we come back, is Bob Woodward a leaker, a criminal leaker? One other uh, revelation from the book is that Trump appears to have revealed a new classified U.S. weapons system, the existence of it, to Woodward. He said, quote, I have built a nuclear, a weapon system that nobody's ever had in this country before, unquote. Woodward says his sources confirmed the existence of this classified weapons system. Um, what's your response to that? There we go. Sorry about that. Before we get your support of Joe Biden, I, I want to ask you, when someone is able to get uh, sources to talk about a classified, secret uh, national security system, isn't that called leaking? 45 is a walking security risk. Mm. It mm. is terrible. Why would you ever, in a million years, tell a reporter that? He, I mean, he's just, 
He's, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's incompetent. I mean, is he is he smart? Is he really that bright? Why would you tell a reporter that? Now, of course, no. what did he say? No one knows about what we have. Well, now they do. So now the arms race is going to heat up. China's going to know they have to advance. Russia now is going to, well, not that they weren't advancing before, but now they really know they have to. North Korea, that was just, that was just Well, let, let me ask you first and foremost about China. Were you aware that China has the number one naval system in the world right now? And that we paid for it. Do, do you know that? The number one naval you faded out. The, the the number number one naval system in the world, China has right now. Uh, I don't know if anyone has armed forces like we do. So I wouldn't put out anyone over in the United States. Well, that's what the U.S. military has stated regarding China's navy at this particular juncture. Well, that, that means that forty five again hasn't done his job. He claims. That he's put so much money in armed forces and we're the best in the world and clearly we're not if that statistic is accurate well it we weren't we were not the best in the world under uh <clears throat> barack hussein obama who virtually dismantled the military and made military personnel who were we've male wear high heels we've been the best in the world since world war ii oh no one is better than the united states doesn't matter who the president is. Uh, yeah, it's amazing that's, that that's happening because apparently uh, China comes out. It's the number one Navy in the world right now. We've paid for that. that? Who did that? Who we, that? We've paid for that. That's the, U, that's the U.S. military has stated that. And as well, China's Navy has also proven that. Over I the past. but okay. But the bottom line is, nonetheless, We've been playing catch up for the past three years with our military. We've done a darn good job, and why not tell the world that we could take take them on in whatever capacity? Apparently, we uh, apparently uh, the rest of the world did not know what Bob Woodward put out because Bob Woodward put that out there in terms of the book Rage, uh, based on resources from other people within the Trump administration, part of the military. So isn't that leaking right there? Because Donald Trump in that quote didn't leak exactly what the service, what the uh, actual nuclear armatory was. I, I have no idea what kind of question that was. That's I, not a question, it's a statement. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. It's your usual rhetorical, <laughs> bright bark messaging. That talking point must have gotten messed up in your computer system. Nah. No idea what kind of question that was. Here's the question. Donald Trump did not leak this. Bob Woodward did. Is Bob Woodward a criminal leaker? 45 leaked things in the Oval Office to Putin's agents. Oh. He so, has declassified things that no president has done before to show off, to show that he has more information than everybody. Of course he does. He's the president. Okay. You don't have to show off. Okay. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's incompetent. Ah, incompetent. Leadership like Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Uh, Joe Biden, who watched over our military being destroyed over the past eight years. Amazing. Uh, I've never heard a statistic during the eight years of the Obama-Biden administration of any country being above us in U.S. military strength. What you just told me is the first I've ever heard that. Really? Okay. Uh, apparently, the Senate Democrats have decided that a GOP relief bill shouldn't come out of the Senate, uh, and they certainly aren't going to have one out of the House. Why are the Democrat Marxists so committed to making certain that the American people suffer during this ongoing crisis with coronavirus? You do know there was a GOP senator that also sided with the Democrats on that bill. Well, of right? course, there's always going to be at least one, and I bet you it was Mitt Romney, wasn't it? No, it was, uh, it was the, the senator from Kentucky, Rand Paul. Uh, Rand Paul. Okay, there you go. There's a good one. All right, but yep. nevertheless, he is one out of all of the Republicans. The Democrats didn't feel it was worthy of consideration. Why? Nor did the GOP feel that the Heroes Bill passed in mid-March, I'm sorry, mid-May, was good enough for the Republicans, well, which handled everything. State and local officials, which meant... Police, firefighters, teachers, 
EMTs, first responders, making sure that the unemployment insurance rates in those states where people have money to go to the store and put money back into the economy. All of those particular pieces were in that bill, the House bill, and McConnell had sat on his desk for three months. He did nothing. I, I want to I wanna ask you in regards to that, um, do you believe that those monies should have been set aside uh, some nearly $1 trillion to state and local Democrat-run cities? Uh, to Absolutely. bail them out. I know that's a fallacy that could, 45 and his allies like uh, to talk about. Really? But it was actually for cities that were in red states. It was also for cities that were in blue states. Why does it matter? Does it matter that our cities and counties and rural areas need help? It's amazing. Why does everything have to be blue or red with this guy? Well, can he, lead? he can't just lead for 33% of the people. He has to lead for the whole country. He doesn't know how to lead. So let me ask you this. In regards to that money going to New York, did New York have plans on actually spending it on police and on fire and on all the <laughs> other services the that they offer? But that's the beauty of public money. It's going to be accountable. You'll be able to see where the money goes. I don't know what the problem okay, is. Okay, wait. Oh, wait a minute. Because Joe Biden said in a recent interview that that stimulus money that they used many years ago for shovel-ready projects, that they had no intent on using it for shovel-ready projects. Those monies were supposed to go directly to the unions in order to make certain that they were going to be okay and well and stay in their public jobs. So apparently the accountability isn't always there with government. Am I correct in that regard? No, you're not correct, but you oh. are correct in the first part. In a lot of cities, and they're both blue people and red people that are members of labor unions that make sure that the middle class in most cities are labor where they have benefits, pensions. So, yes, what's wrong with having labor agreements in cities or counties or states, red and blue? Well, Nothing's wrong with that. No, it is something wrong when you're using them to bail out the unions and you're not having any intent whatsoever to use it to use it for the small businesses that are falling out of as 45 and his gop friends bailing out the rich on that ridiculous don't you wish you had that money back now from that darn tax cut uh wait a minute would you consider the ppp a bailout of the rich as well because those monies were used to go directly to keep the people employed but we've heard countless stories all over the country where small businesses did not get access to those dollars, and larger businesses did. Oh, like Harvard University? Oh, Secretary, no, that was a, clearly a mistake. But Secretary oh. Mnuchin, Mnuchin, Mnuchin did not do his job. He's oh. not been accountable to Capitol Hill or Nancy Pelosi. Well, wait a minute. For the Big Greens Committee, he is not sharing how the decisions were made and where the money went. It's amazing he's not accountable when he was the one who made certain that Harvard University turned the money back in. And Yale yeah, University that, turned the money that, back in. Was that his alma mater? Good. I mean, good job. Well, buddy. it's not a matter of alma mater. It, it, another, for returning to money. But that's accountability. Uh, the okay. L, how about the L.A. Lakers? Wonderful. How about the L.A. Lakers? You didn't, what about the small black-owned, Latino-owned businesses or white-owned businesses in rural parts of this country that didn't get a dime? Well, many of them did get dimes. Many of them did. Many didn't. I agree with you wholeheartedly. But often, those individuals who were at the table did receive those particular monies and supports. Churches and other institutions as well, nonprofits. want to ask you very quickly, because you're talking about the black Americans. Uh, apparently, uh, in an interview, Trump said he didn't have responsibility to understand the pain of black Americans. Uh, this is how it's been crafted by the Hill.com. However, when you read the interview, the question was about white privilege. Do you believe that there's white privilege in the Appalachian Mountains, sir? I don't know. Is there white privilege in the Appalachian Mountains? Yeah. I don't understand. What is that? I don't understand. Well, apparently white people in the Appalachian Mountains aren't doing all that well uh, no, financially. I, Do you believe that that's... Not. And, and Reverend Jesse Jackson pointed this out. Mm -hmm. Years ago, mm -hmm. a lot of the same plight in urban areas, uh, you could find the same in some of the rural 
places in America, Appalachia, if you would like to pick it. So I agree with you. However, where the privilege definition has to be spread out, it's not just to the way you would define it or the way 45 or Bob Woodward would define it. It's also not getting shot in the back seven times. That's also a privilege. Because it doesn't happen in that in the white community. Well, yes, it does. In fact, black and brown community. So privilege isn't just about economics. That's not it's true. Also about how you're treated in America. That's not true because more white Americans die at the hand of yeah. police officers yeah, than. Yeah. There yeah. are more, more white Americans yeah. in the United States. But per capita, it's not even close. Yeah, yeah. But let me ask you this. If you were standing behind Jacob Black, or Blake, forgive me. And he reached into his car as a police officer. What would you have done? I would have tased his ass. He was tased already. I didn't see. It. No one saw the tase. Uh, of course, no one saw the tase. But and that's all that you go on is what CNN shows you. But the truth of the matter was, there were witnesses at the scene that say that he was tased. Jacob Blake, who was going to the place where he had raped the young woman. Not many people that can get up from a tase. It's lots of people that can get up from a tase. Why not tase him again? Okay, you tase him once, tase him again. If he gets up from a tase, do you really think? <laughs> do you accurate. really think that that, that, accurate. that is accurate? He got up from a tase. Well, well, using the tase puts you, makes you incapacitated for at least 45 seconds. They had enough time to cuff him. 45, okay. Let me just tell you, he was tased, and he got up, and he walked back to the I car. Don't believe that. Of course you don't. That's of course you don't. Response. Because you were okay. there, you saw it, you knew exactly what and, happened. And what those people call the few people who were there, that maybe, that maybe came from them. Just like you were probably spreading the good word that Kyle Rittenhouse was a murderer, right? He shot and killed two people. What uh, else do you call that? Uh, Self-defense. Thank you so much, Michael Brown. the argument on the second one. Self the first person he shot, there was no self-defense. He shot No, he was. Oh, my God. I got to have you. I, I want to have you next week talk to me about three big cases. Breonna Taylor, uh, George Floyd, and Ritten. I would bring you back. <laughs> Absolutely pathetic. That man defended himself, and he did pretty doggone well. Pretty doggone well. Michael Brown, Michael Brown, in spite of the way I feel for you, Bonnie Williams still loves you. So there. <laughs> Did you get Bonnie a raise yet? No, she's not getting one this year. <laughs> I ran out of PPP money. <laughs> Michael Brown, ladies and gentlemen, the Michael Brown Show. God bless you, sir. We'll see you next week. Very good. Look forward to it. See All you. right. See you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is always great to have that man come on, even though he's so, so wrong, so very wrong about so many things. Oh, my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, and let me just check the chat roll, because I know, Mary Brockman, you're absolutely right. Peace in the Middle East is not significant. How? I agree with you. Mary Brockman, you're absolutely an angel of wisdom in that chat roll. Uh, I did not see any input from Bonnie Williams, so I must have done a very good job. Uh, destroying my uh, candidate here, uh, former candidate Michael Brown, uh, and debate. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be back with more of the best at Urban Conservative Talk. I am yours truly, the exceptional one, Kevin McClinton, uh, and you are watching TECN TV. We as a nation are a republic, not a democracy. We do not believe in looting, rioting, uh, and homicide. Uh, as a means of getting your political point across. We are the best in urban conservative news, talk, and movies. Ladies and gentlemen, that man, mm, if he were black, he would be behind bars. Can I use that term? Now? Can I say that? Because it, it's white privilege. Can I, it was a black privilege? I don't know. We, we'll be back.
good, Adina. Real good. <laughs>